very busy schedule for the Royals, hasn't he? Absolutely. Joining us to talk uh, all things Royal this weekend are Giles Brandreth and ITV News uh, Royal Editor Chris Shipp. Good to have you with us, Chris, who's been good following morning, the suffix Chris. ahead of the Invictus Games. Morning to both of you, Giles. Morning. Always a treat to see you. It's good to be here. I'm feeling so happy today. You're feeling very morning. sweet, aren't I'm you? I'm feeling very sweet. I'm wearing my smartest <laughs> jumper. And I've had a wonderful weekend. I was in Buxton and Southport and Bennis and Edmonds being reminded what a beautiful and brilliant country this is. Yeah. It so is. I'm full of the joys of spring and meeting my one of my oldest friends, Basil Brush, here today. Isn't it wonderful? We first met 45 years ago when we both almost got fired. I was then writing scripts for him with a royal joke. I wrote a royal joke for Basil for his TV show 45 years ago. What, what does was the, the queen do when she burps? What does the queen do when she burps? Can we work it out? She issues a royal pardon. <laughs> Boom. That's really Boom. good. Love that. Chris Shipp already thinking, what on earth have I signed up for this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> so, listen, let's start with the first talking board, which is uh, Harry and Meghan at the Invictus Games, and I guess the context around this. Uh, Harry was interviewed by a pair of young reporters for a digital news outlet that aimed to give children a voice in the presence of the Netflix cameras. Let's take a look first. What is your wish for Archie and Lily, then? To grow up in a better world to grow up in a fairer world, a safer world, a more equal world. Um, it's not going to be easy, but I will never, ever, ever rest until I, as a parent, have tried to at least tried to make the world a better place for them, because it is our responsibility that the world is the way that it is now. And I don't think that we should be bringing children into the world unless we are going to make that commitment to make it better for them. We cannot steal your future. <laughs> Nice oh, hug. it's a lovely thing oh. to say, isn't it? Absolutely. So it's the Sussex's first public appearance in Europe since the pair stepped down the senior rules in 2020. Uh, well, Chris, you're there, so give us a context of, of, of what, the, what the feeling's like and, and, um, and this public appearance. Well, you know, guys, good morning. Uh, the Invictus Games is often called Harry's other baby. I mean, he left his two babies, um, Archie and Lilibet, in uh, California. Actually, Megan's gone back to them now, but he is here with his other baby, which is Invictus Games. He founded it after two tours of duty in Afghanistan. And you will not find a single person around here who doesn't absolutely love Harry because they so appreciate him setting this up. We've had Invictus Games in London, Orlando, Toronto, Sydney, and now The Hague. And after two years, delay I think everyone's just kind of delighted to be here and you know they love Harry here I I love Harry I'm, well, I'm loving I Harry do. I have a son-in-law who was a soldier in Afghanistan and in fact who has been to the Invictus Games and they really do adore Harry and you can see from that clip why everybody adores Harry he is adorable the Queen adores Harry but the world has become divided sadly um, I think but after the relationship him moving to California we now seem to find Megan a kind of Marmite person some really love her some don't love her so much but you can't not adore that person and his actual approach to life and this is a real achievement the yeah yeah Chris, Are you do Chris, when it's just, Chris do you see you know you follow the rules do you see a different Harry here, is this Harry sort of unrecognisable from the Harry that you've been sort of witnessing over the last couple of years? Yeah, it's kind of a different Harry. I mean, there's a different set of operations in place. This, you know, the last time we did Invictus Games, for example, was in Sydney, and then Harry and Meghan were both working members of the royal family. I mean, how times have changed uh, since we were in Sydney for the last Invictus Games. So everything is different here. For example, there's a Netflix crew following him around because, you know, they've done the deal with Netflix. They're getting paid a a wad of cash from Netflix, and they want a TV programme out of it. So, you know, these kind of things are different. Um, but Harry is very relaxed. He loves being here. I mean, he was up on stage um, over the weekend at the opening ceremony. I don't know if you saw that kiss he gave Meghan on stage. I mean, they were delighted to be here. And he, as I say, he's going to be here now till the closing ceremony on Friday. They're no longer working royals, so they're providing, for example, their own security. In fact, they've just hired a former security person from Barack Obama. Oh. So they're going for top-flight security. Uh, Harry is in dispute with the British government, saying that when they're in the UK, that maybe the British should be paying for their security. That argument is still going on and is going through the courts. But it is a new world now, and uh, they are being... The story is being told in full, including some aerial shots this weekend of Harry revealing a bald spot. So he and his brother do still have something in common. The hair is going. I can say this because I've got none myself. <laughs> well, they're human, aren't they? They, they get are older you are and right, they lose though. hair. There's something, when you, put, when you see him in a different... We, I did a Battle of Britain documentary in 2015 and he came down for the day. And yeah. It was a 75th anniversary. 
And uh, when you see him around the guys flying, and when you see him around Tom Neal, who's the veteran we took up, there was a, you see a, a lightness of touch there, I guess, that is just sort of, is unencumbered by, I mean, there's always going to be people following him. There's like a shoal of people around him, but he just seemed unencumbered by it, you know? He just seemed like he was a bit more yeah. relaxed. I wonder how many people, I don't know if you know, Chris, how many people entourage has the Netflix crew got? Do you know how big that crew is? Well, everywhere I look, I see a Netflix person somewhere. And actually, they started here wearing these sort of burgundy bibs. And then all the sort of photographers for the newspapers are here were started photographing the Netflix people. And then they took the bibs off. And then yesterday, they've got these um, identity uh, lanyards and they've turned them round so you can't actually see them. So they're kind of like the Netflix people feel like they're getting more attention than Harry and Meghan. So, but I can't see any around me at the moment. But, um, you know, I, within a few minutes, I'll, I reckon I'll see a camera whiz past from Netflix. Unbelievable. There's nothing new in this. If you're as old as me, you remember the 1950s when there was competition between the Queen and Princess Margaret. And the papers used to write it up. Oh, is Princess Margaret and her antics and her love life, are they outshining the Queen? So this game has been being played by the media for many years. Yeah. Well, and of course, obviously, <laughs> while they're, they're there, they're going to be scrutinised yeah. every move, everything they say. And obviously, Meghan Markle is scrutinised about everything she talks about. And apparently, allegedly, she's uh, made a jibe at the royal family. We do have a clip of that. Let's take a quick look. It is here at the Invictus Games that we honor your years of active duty on the field and your continued service to your country, to your family, and your community off the field. Thank you so much for your service and thank you to all the family and the friends that are here who have been supporting you along the way. Because this is service, this is dedication, and this is the Invictus family. So, Giles, do you think she was making a jibe towards you, the royal family? If you love her, you salute what she was saying. If you're one of these people who has reservations about her and is scrutinising everything she is saying, yeah. you'll think here she is echoing the remarks that were made when she and Maggie, uh, she and Harry left public life, as it were, left the official royal family, uh, where mm, they were told, you know, it's the life of continuing service. So, is she making a jibe? I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt and say no. It actually. just sounded like well, a I nice, think she was just was, an, uh, a I nice speech so. saluting people and their service in the services. This is about service people who have been injured actually coming back and taking part in the Invictus Games. Good on them both. Yeah. Chris, what do you think? You know, it's all about this word service because after Harry had all of his sort of military titles stripped off him by the Queen when he officially left the royal family, uh, Meghan and Harry responded to that statement from Buckingham Palace and said, service is universal. So when she mentioned, I mean, the stadium where they were speaking was just over here next to me. Uh, and when she said the word service, a lot of newspapers wrote up, was that a, a, you know, a barbed comment? Was she attacking Buckingham Palace? I see it differently because I think in America, they talk about service all the time. Have you ever been to a sort of a baseball match in America where everyone's sort of stands up and salutes service. And I just think they, they, in America, they're much more likely to use that word service than we are in the UK. Yeah. Um, let's move on a bit, uh, to talk about the Queen. And I, was, I sort of want to morph stories three and four, if we can. So the, the Queen misses uh, the Easter Sunday service, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, who joined other family members of the royal family uh, for the annual Sunday service. This is a time of transition. The Queen is 95, going to be next week, I think, 96 years of age. And she is an old lady now. Yeah. She won't be doing so much. So we're going to see much more of the next two generations. This was illustrated perfectly this weekend. Uh, the Maunday service on Thursday last, it was the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. And then on Sunday, a service that the Queen hasn't missed, I think, in half a century, she preferred to go to a private chapel within Windsor Castle and the formal service, it was William and Catherine and their children. This is the way it's going to yeah. be. Yeah. So that was my on. question. Are we now entering an era we of co-monarchy? Not but... quite co-monarchy. It's a good way of describing it in a way because more of the official duties will be performed by the Prince of Wales and Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, and then the next generation. The Queen will stay as Queen. This isn't what you might call a regency. Yeah. Uh, where somebody what else... That, what would be that? What that means is regency comes from the word rex, meaning king, where the regent takes over the roles of the monarch. It has happened before when there's been infirmity from the king. Uh, the queen is capable and wants to go on doing it, so that's why she continues to see new incoming ambassadors and high commissioners. She's doing those 
And those meetings are called the credentials meetings. They present their credentials. She still sees the red boxes. She still takes a weekly telephone call. She's sometimes still the a box. meeting yeah. from the Prime Minister. So all those duties will continue. She still signs the official documents. A regency would have Prince Charles doing those duties. Okay. Uh, we're, not, we're, we're away from that, I think. Chris, are you seeing uh, that transition from, from on a day-to-day -day basis with, with, with your work? 100%. You know, I've done this job for a little over five years. And actually, the very first year I did it was when Prince Charles uh, took over from the Queen at the Cenotaph on Remembrance Sunday when it was decided the Queen could no longer walk backwards down the steps and Prince Charles took over that particular role. And throughout my time covering the royals, more and more often he's been taking over uh, from his mother. And Giles just mentioned the Royal Maundy service uh, on Thursday. There were 192 people uh, that were, received the Maundy money. I mean, how is the Queen really going to go up and down the miles of St George's Chapel in order to give them the money. That was why it was decided that Prince Charles should do it. But I'll tell you this, uh, Dermot and Alison, what I think we're going to see now is a presumption that the Queen is not going to attend an event and therefore it will be newsworthy if she turns up. It's kind of now turned completely yeah. on its head. And those video calls you just mentioned, you're going to get those video calls not because of COVID, but because the Queen can no longer physically yeah. go to an event like she did at the a hospital, for example, last week. It makes me happy that she's resting up, though, because oh, yeah. that means she's going to last a little bit longer. I wanted to chill. I wanted to rest at home. And it'll be a nice surprise when she does turn up. We've got that Jubilee weekend coming. We don't yet know which of the events she's going to go to. There'll be a royal at all of them in any event. And if she comes up as well, hey, it'll yeah. be a surprise. What a treat. Aww. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Back Thank you, it. Giles. Uh, Giles, <laughs> we'll see you later for the news. Thank you.